Hello, TBN UK family. Welcome to Voice of Healing. It's your beloved brother, Jerry Malanda, and I am the leader of the House of Prayer for All Nations Church. This is series four of Voice of Healing, and so far we have looked at the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also the seven Hebrew words for praise in the Bible. And today I want to talk about the blessings that come when we obey God's word and the curses that come when we disobey his word. Point number one, disobedience brings a curse. Now, a curse is the opposite of a blessing. Instead of God's purpose in your life coming to pass, actually, it is the enemy's desires that happen to you. Instead of enjoying the manifestations of the goodness of the Lord, of the good plans of God and of his purposes in your life, actually it is the evil plans and the evil purposes of the enemy that happen to you. Now, in the Bible, when the Bible mentions a copper, having a copper sky, it is actually a sign of imminent doom and destruction. And in the Bible, we have two sections known as uh, the portions of rebuke. It is found in the book of Leviticus and also in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. So in the book of Leviticus, it is in Leviticus 26, verse 19. And the Bible says, uh, I will make your sky like uh, uh, iron and your earth like uh, copper. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 23, it is switched. It is now your heaven over you that is uh, like copper and the earth uh, which is under you that is like uh, iron. Now, Cain killed, for instance, his brother Abel and the earth became copper. In other words, the earth was cursed and his heaven became iron, meaning God could not bend his own law even to help Cain. Now, it happened in the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 11, uh, verse 10 and verse 11. The Bible says, God said to Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth. In other words, the earth has become copper, which has opened its mouth to receive the blood of your brother from your hands. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Now, when we read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from 15 to 68, it's actually the opposite that happens. The Bible says that it is when we disobey God's commandments that actually our sky is now copper. So the curse is now coming from heaven and we should expect imminent judgment and doom and the earth becomes iron. In other words, the earth cannot bend itself to kind of help you to extract the things from the earth because the earth at the end of the day belongs to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 24 verse 1, the earth belongs to the Lord. So it cannot go against the decree of heaven and all the fullness and the world and those who dwell in the earth as well. Now, point number two. Obedience brings uh, blessings. The only way for our heaven that is uh, copper and our earth underneath us that is like iron to cooperate with us and release the power of the blessing from heaven is that uh, we abide in Christ Jesus and we abide in uh, his uh, word. That is the only way we can enjoy the blessings of God. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 7, if you abide in me, Jesus, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. 
Now, brethren, God's promises are not always sweet, like honey. But at times, the conditions attached to the fulfillment or the manifestations of those promises can actually be sour like a lemon. You see, the book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible tells us, So I went, John is telling us, so I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. So take the little book, the Bible. And uh, he said to me, take and eat it. Eat the word of God. And what will happen? It will be in your stomach bitter. The word bitter here is the word uh, picros in Greek. It is uh, unpleasantly bitter or unpleasantly acidic like uh, Lemon. So the word of God sometimes can be acidic and unpleasantly and acidic like uh, lemon. And the Bible says to us that uh, when it is fulfilled, hallelujah, when the word of God has come to pass in your life, it is going to be actually sweet uh, like uh, honey. Are you with me? So the word of God especially the part of the Bible that is called the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, a lot of commandments. And sometimes we don't want to obey the commandments of the Lord. But in the law of God, just like in this lemon, there is actually power in the lemon. If you decide to dwell in the word of God, and do the word of God, you are going to receive power from on high. Just like this lemon that has about 0.7 volt of energy is able to power this uh, small uh, clock. The same way as well, there is a power in the word of God, though sometimes it can be sour. So I want you to dwell in God's word and to be a doer of God's word, even if it is sour at times, not to your likings. And I can guarantee you, God is going to watch over his word and give you all your heart desires in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, to verse 20, if you are willing, many Christians are willing to enjoy the promises of the Bible, but they are not obedient. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, though the word of God can be sour and acidic like a lemon, but if you are willing and obedient to the word of God, you are going to eat the good of the land. The land is very good, full of good fruits but you need to obey God's word. But if you refuse and you rebel against God's commandment, you shall be devoured by the sword of the enemy. Point number three. Doers of God's word are overtaken by the blessings. Hallelujah. Moses told us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse one to verse two. Now, it shall come to pass that if you diligently, hallelujah, obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, though it is a sour like a lemon, which I command you today, that the Lord your God shall set you high above all nations of the earth. Hallelujah. And he continues to say, and all these blessings that are contained in this book, they shall come upon you and they shall overtake you. Why? Because you obeyed. You are not just willing to enjoy the promises, but you obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. If you abide in Christ Jesus and God's word abides in you, you are going to be empowered in every aspect of your life. And I want to tell you that not everything in the word of God is sour like the lemon. Some portions of the Bible are actually sweet, like even an apple. And you also can extract power from those different promises that are not sour. So not everything about the word of God is sour. You see, even inside the apple, there is an energy of about two volts, and it is still able to power this small clock. So all the other parts of the Bible, like the books of the prophets, the books of Proverbs, the books of uh, uh, Songs of Solomon, they are sweet, 
portions of the Bible. And there is also power. Every section of the Bible, there is a power. So the Bible is like a basket full of uh, fruits. The law of Moses is like uh, the lemon. But uh, the songs of Solomon is as sweet as uh, apple. And uh, maybe proverb is like uh, the orange. And also, even if you take the orange, you also can extract the power from uh, the orange. As we can see, there is power. Every portion of the Bible has uh, power in it. And you can see it is still powering this clock. There is a power in every portion of the Bible. So embrace every aspect of the word of God. If you are willing and obedient, you are going to eat the good of the land. God is going to empower every aspect of your life. The word of God is going to be a lamp onto your feet, a light onto your path. The entrance of God's word is going to give you understanding and revelation. And Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says that you shall remember the Lord your God because it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may establish his uh, covenant as he swore to your fathers. There is power in every aspect of the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Just like we can extract the power voltage from every fruit to power this small clock, there is also power in every aspect of God's uh, word in the name of Jesus. Power to bring you healing, power to bring you deliverance. The Bible tells us, for instance, in the Psalm 107, verse 20, God sent forth his word to heal you and to deliver you from all kinds of destruction in the name of Jesus. So point number four, hallelujah. Your earth is blessed through Christ Jesus. Now, if a person is not born again, de facto, the earth of that person is like a copper and uh, it is cursed why because of the disobedient uh, act of uh, Adam in Genesis chapter 3 and uh, also because of the murder of uh, Abel by Cain Genesis chapter 4 said to us that uh, the earth was now cursed because of the blood of uh, Abel that was uh, shed now but when you and I we turn to Christ uh, Jesus when we become uh, Born again because of Christ Jesus, he died for our sins and he made atonement for all of our sin, including the original sin of Adam and including the murder of Abel by Cain. So the curses in Genesis chapter 3 and in Genesis chapter 4, Christ in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24, Christ has become now our mediator of the new covenant and his blood that was shed is now speaking better things on our behalf. He's now speaking blessings in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus came to break the curse on the ground so that the ground now is cooperating with Christians. The ground is now cooperating with uh, the church. And that's what John told us in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 to verse uh, uh, 16. The Bible says, now when the dragon Satan saw that he had been cast uh, to the earth, he persecuted the woman. Here the woman stands for the church. And verse 15, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman or after the church that he might cause her to be carried away by a the flood. Hallelujah. But now that Christ has died, his blood has brought the blessing. The Bible says, but the earth now helped the woman or helped the church. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Now that you are born again, the earth is now cooperating with you. The, the earth is now cooperating with the church and every born again believer. So your heaven is no longer iron, hallelujah, and your earth is no longer copper in the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says to us that we overcame Satan and all the curses of Genesis 3 and Genesis chapter 4 by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and by the word of our testimony in the name of Jesus. The only way for a believer 
for his heaven to become again like a copper and his earth to return into uh, being uh, uh, iron. It is when that uh, believer decides to practice the sins leading to death that were listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. And Balaam the diviner said to Balak the king that wanted to curse the children of Israel, he said, God has blessed these people and nobody can reverse it. That was in Numbers chapter 23. The only way you need to curse these people so that they can be defeated if you entice them to practice sexual sins, to also commit idolatry and their own God is going to curse them. That is according to Revelations chapter 2, verse 14, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. That's why I want you to be saved. And let me pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, we want our heavens to be opened in the name of Jesus. We want now to receive the blessings of uh, our heavenly Father. So I pray for as many as have not given their lives to Christ yet, that you forgive them of all their iniquities. And Father, as far as is the east from the west, King of glory, forgive them in the name of Jesus and blot out all the handwritings that are standing against them and make them as white as snow in Jesus' precious name. So if you have made this quality decision, welcome into the family of believers. So from this day forward, I want you to contact us and we are going to be able to help you in your Christian journey in Jesus' precious name. So now, let me share a testimony with you. A man came forward during our mission trip in India and he was suffering from chronic migraines and fever. Now, uh, we put a uh, handkerchief uh, in our hands and we blessed it, prayed over it and gave it to him. We told him to put it under his pillow that night. And when he put it under his pillow, he slept the migraine, that chronic migraine was completely gone. His fever also left. He came back to church. He was so happy and he testified that those migraines had tormented him for many years and every day, but he was now set completely free in the name of Jesus. So praise the Lord. And I want also to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with chronic migraines as well in the name of Jesus. And you've been on medication for a long time for those chronic migraines and you have a facial paralysis because of those chronic migraines. And I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for revealing that case of facial paralysis because of those chronic migraines. I curse those chronic migraines in the name of Jesus. And I command perfect wholeness and perfect soundness right now in Jesus' name. I command those facial nerves to receive the electric signal of the Holy Ghost and start moving again that paralysis of uh, his face, Father, I command it to be completely healed in Jesus' name. And from the crown of his head to the tips of his toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you are going to eat the good of the land. God has wonderful promises concerning your life. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 11, that the word of God is the seed. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you the seed of God's word to heal you and deliver you from all kinds of destructive things in your life. And if you are willing and obedient, you are going to enjoy the promises of God contained in this Bible. Let me pray for you. Lay your hand on the part of your body that is afflicted and I'm going to agree with you in the place of prayer and we are going to cast out that sickness and disease right now in Jesus precious name. Heavenly Father, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise because you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And right now, I adjure you, Satan. I command you in the name of Jesus, pack your sickness, pack your, your diseases, and I command you, leave at once in the name of Jesus. Stop tormenting God's children immediately in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, we want to bless you. We want to give you all the glory, and we want to give you all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I see someone, you have a problem with your bladder. You have a problem with your bladder. You had a surgery when you had a C-section, and uh, uh, the knife, unfortunately, went on your bladder, 
and since then you've been having problem with your bladder. I'm going to pray for your bladder in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Having children, bearing children is a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And Father, what happened during the C-section, Father, was not of you in Jesus' name. So I command that uh, bladder in the name of Jesus to be completely reconstructed in the name of Jesus and completely healed in Jesus' precious name. From the crown of her head to the tips of her toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness in the name of Jesus. I see another sister. Uh, when you had your baby after that, they put a mesh in you after that surgery, they put the mesh, but they removed that mesh, but you still have uh, chronic pains and now you're even paralyzed. So let me pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, childbearing is a blessing in the name of Jesus. I command the pain and the paralysis that resulted from uh, the doctors putting that mesh in her to completely disappear in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity and chronic chronic pain. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave at once in Jesus' name. From the crown of her head to the tips of her toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness right now for the glory of God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I hear someone with deafness, deafness in your left ear and you are wearing a earring aids i want you to remove it when we were in india everyone that we prayed for that was death they heard instantly so remove that earring aids and put your finger in your ear and i'm going to pray in the name of jesus father the deaf spirit is a spirit that came from the pit of hell. So I curse that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And I command the eardrum to be completely recreated in Jesus' precious name. And I command that person even to hear whispers right now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of the head to the tips of the toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness. And I pray my King and my Savior for everyone under the sound of my voice whose case has not been mentioned, you know the case. As we agree in prayer, my King and my Savior, so I send forth your healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered from your torment right now in Jesus' precious name. And we are careful to give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to thank you, TBN UK family, for joining me today. Please remember that in addition to what you have heard today in our teaching, always seek medical advice for your illnesses. Next time, we will look at uh, how to stir up the water of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Please contact us if you want to have uh, further information concerning the study of uh, today. The Hope Fan team are here to serve you in the name of Jesus. While you are waiting for the next episode, you can catch up on demand. Make sure you tune in expectant of a miracle next time. I love you and I will see you soon. God bless you and God loves you unconditionally. In Jesus' name, amen.